Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is an honor to be with you today in front of Kentucky's beautiful state capitol as your lieutenant governor and the first woman to ever take this oath of office twice. <laughs> Today we gather on the steps of the People's House, not as Democrats or Republicans or Independents, but as Kentuckians. As I look around, I'm reminded that what unites us is far greater than what divides us. I'm grateful to see family and friends who support me and make it possible for me to do the work that I love. My parents, particularly my dad, from whom compliments are hard to come by, so I'm really glad we got that introduction on video, Dad. <laughs> my husband and your second gentleman, Chris. <laughs> Emma, Will, Nate, and Evelyn. I work towards a better Kentucky every day with you in mind. And I'm grateful to see Governor Bashir and the first family. It is truly an honor to serve along someone who treats every Kentucky family as his own. <clears throat> Governor, thank you for your leadership, your example, and for the opportunity that you have given me to serve. In the building behind us, we see memorials to Kentuckians who, while imperfect, rose to meet the challenges of their day. Men like Abraham Lincoln, best known for holding the country together through the Civil War. Henry Clay, who history remembers as the great compromiser. And Nettie Depp, the first female statue in our capital, who also happens to be a teacher. The Bashir Coleman administration has forged its own path, but we never lost sight of the historic, uniquely Kentucky symbolism around us. Because bringing people together through the toughest of times, like Lincoln, finding common ground on the biggest issues of the day, as Clay did, and building a better future one student at a time, like Nettie Depp, those time-honored values have echoed through the years and still guide us today. The symbolism on these grounds is important, and so are the lessons that we draw from it. But it is just as important what you don't see here today. There is an empty space in the rotunda where the statue of Jefferson Davis once stood. That is because we not only installed the Capitol's first female statue, we also removed one that represented division. Of course, removing a statue does not change history, but we can all agree that every Kentuckian, young and old, male and female, all colors, all faiths, deserve to feel they belong if this is truly to be the people's house. Now, I don't have to tell you that over the past four years, our Commonwealth has faced historic tragedy, but my faith in Kentucky has never been stronger. We lost over 19,000 of our fellow Kentuckians to COVID. Tornadoes devastated entire communities in the West and flooding upended countless lives in the East. It was the worst of mother nature and yet the best of humanity. We faced our challenges head on because that is what we do and we never backed down because that is who we are. I am so proud that we chose our healthcare heroes to lead today's inaugural parade because during the pandemic, you led us every step of the way too. We see you and we are grateful for your work. As the pandemic caused us to feel anxious, isolated, and uncertain, the discussion surrounding mental health took center stage. Nationally, the number one issue for parents was and is their child's mental health. But I did not like that I only heard adults 
talking to other adults about it. So in Kentucky, we became a national leader by elevating student voice. Our student mental health initiative has delivered $40 million in federal funding to Kentucky for school-based mental health services, and we are not done yet. To the student leaders joining us today who served as our North Star during this work, as well as the counselors and family resource coordinators who participated in today's parade, thank you. Your voices and your contributions are worth celebrating. And that's true of so many Kentuckians, historically and today, including too many who don't always get the recognition and respect they deserve. From the beginning, Governor Bashir and I have set out to change that. During our first term, we assembled the most diverse cabinet in Kentucky history. More women and minorities have been represented in leadership positions in our first four years than ever before. Because decisions shouldn't be made about us without us. When we took office, the Kentucky Commission on Women was inactive, and Governor Bashir asked me to revive this initiative, and as the state's highest elected woman, I was honored to do so. This year, for the first time since 2014, the Commission inducted seven dynamic women from across the Commonwealth into the Kentucky Women Remembered Hall of Fame, and there will be more because representation matters. These are the values that have helped pave the way to where we are today. Our response to tragedy, our commitment to lifting the voices of every Kentuckian, that has shaped a future brighter than I could have ever imagined possible when I stood here four years ago. Thanks to historic economic investment, unparalleled job creation, and record budget surpluses, Kentucky ranks number two in the country in economic development. And as a girl from Bergen, one of the smallest towns in the Commonwealth, the number I am most proud of is that Kentucky skyrocketed to number three in the nation in rural job creation because Governor Bashir and I believe in a Kentucky that lifts people up and not one that leaves people out. As we prepared for today's inauguration, I couldn't help but wonder, how will we be remembered in this moment? As the governor and I revisited the memories of both the tragedies and the triumphs of the last four years, I remembered a saying I used as a basketball coach. It's not what happens to you. It's how you react to it that matters. And that helped me realize it won't be a global pandemic or historic tornadoes or catastrophic flooding that will define us. It will be how we moved forward together. What I will remember about you, Kentucky, is how you sacrifice for each other through uncertain times. Neighbors, even complete strangers showing up for one another in what had to be the darkest hour for so many families. And local and state leaders fulfilling our promise to be there until every structure and every life is rebuilt. The goodness of our people restored my faith in humanity over and over again. Showing up for one another has never been more important. And you can rest assured that it was, is what will guide our next four years together. Our service here is too short to be wasted on partisanship and political games. I think Abraham Lincoln and Henry Clay would agree. And I know Nettie Depp would agree that the next chapter of this story that we're writing together shouldn't be about us should be about preparing the next generation of Kentuckians to harness this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that we have worked so hard to create for them. Because yes, our economy is booming, but we cannot lose sight that the future of Kentucky's economy is in our classrooms today. 
Thank you to the educators who helped lead our parade today, just as you lead your communities every day. We cannot continue as the second best state in economic development if we remain 40th in teacher pay. We will not stay number three in rural job creation if we continue to underfund the largest employer in every rural community, and that is their public school. From cradle to career, education is the key that unlocks doors for every Kentuckian, and here is a perfect example. Once we waived the GED testing fee, over 8,000 Kentuckians improved their education to get a job that was once out of reach. So now, let's turn to the opposite end of the spectrum, our littlest learners. We could not continue this historic momentum if our children's zip code determines their place in the world by the first day of kindergarten. Now that might sound hyperbolic, but follow me here. Prison populations are projected by third grade literacy rates. Third grade literacy rates are projected by kindergarten readiness. And kindergarten readiness is projected by access to pre-K. Quite literally, we can invest in young people on the front end or we will pay for it on the back end. The time for universal pre-K in Kentucky is now. Our Education First administration chose an inaugural theme like Forward Together for a reason, because that's the kind of Kentucky our kids deserve. And that is the kind of leadership voters asked for. I pledge to you, Kentucky, that we will continue to show up and extend our hand in the name of putting people over politics. That Governor Bashir and I will continue to set an example of decency and kindness that you can be proud of. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you for believing in us because we will never stop believing in you. God bless you and may God continue to bless the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Jacqueline Coleman, do solemnly swear. I, Jacqueline Coleman, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth. And be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky. And be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So long as I continue a citizen thereof so long as I continue a citizen thereof. And that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability. And that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability. The office of Lieutenant Governor according to law. The office of Lieutenant Governor according to law. And I do further solemnly swear. And I do further solemnly swear. That since the adoption of the present Constitution. That since the adoption of the present Constitution. I being a citizen of this state. I, being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons. Have not fought a duel with deadly weapons. Within this state nor out of it. Within this state nor out of it. Nor have I sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons. Nor have I sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons. Nor have I acted as a second in carrying a challenge. <laughs> Nor have I acted as a second in carrying a challenge. Nor aided or assisted any person thus offending nor aided or assisted any person thus offending so help me god so help me god all right, all right.